Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, the organizer to having me uh, for presenting Cove Therapeutics. So I'm Rudolf Kavala, the CEO of Cove. Uh, Cove is a genetic medicine company focused on, uh, initially focused on CNS and ophthalmology disorders with uh, based on a unique platform for delivery. What is unique is, uh, as opposed to other companies, we are uh, starting from existing vectors that have been clinically and commercially validated, such as certain AV serotype and commercially available NPs. And we try to leverage those existing vectors and functionalize those vectors with a unique bioconjugation technology in order to improve their efficacy and safety profile. And to do so, we are using a unique uh, technology based on chemistries which are not the usual chemistries used for antibody drug conjugate. For instance, we are using <coughs> different linker technology that have been patented, uh, which enable to design rationally, which enable us to rationally design ligands for targeting specific receptors on a uh, tissue of interest. And our um, technology is a one-step chemistry to actually bind those ligands onto the surface of the vectors after the formulation or formations of those vectors. So we are not changing, for instance, AV uh, uh, surface composition. We are not introducing unnatural amino acid or uh, spy tag technology. We are directly binding our ligands on uh, amine residue at the surface of uh, AVs. And we have been developing that technology for the last four years, coming from University of Nantes in France. And we recently have deployed that technology to LNPs with the same principle of covalently binding uh, ligands onto the surface. So it is different from others on many aspects in the sense that first we select N groups uh, based on a structure activity relationship that are well defined uh, on human receptors. And the other important aspect is we can modify the existing candidates that have been already developed on certain AV serotype or, or certain LNP composition. So we have initially developed that technology using a library of ligands with small molecules and end group on, on specifically carbohydrate. This library was designed to target retinal cells and neurons, and you will see next slide where we will be presenting data we have generated on primate using this library. Recently, we have been able to develop a new ligands, uh, specifically ligands using peptide as an end group, which enable to target a, a broader variety of, of receptors. We are currently working on other generation of ligands using aptamers or uh, larger molecules and end group. And our objective is really to go beyond um, retina and CNS and target other tissue with uh, those specific ligands. So the company is, is basically focused on the uh, platform, we call it Alligator, for advanced, uh, advanced vector ligand conjugates. Uh, from this um, platform, we have developed our internal pipeline uh, with an initial focus on CNS and ophthalmology. And we are also collaborating and looking for licensing out our technology on a target per target basis. We have already four ongoing collaborations with uh, NASDAQ listed biotech companies on large pharma. So first, what we have generated with AV conjugates. Uh, we have been working on, on different serotype, initially focusing on um, conjugating AV2 for local delivery in the brain and in the retina. Then we have developed other conjugates for a CSF route of administration. I will share with you more data on this. And we are now uh, developing new conjugated AV for IV administrations with the objective of targeting BBB penetrance as well as muscle, skeletal muscle. So this is an example of one of our lead capsid, which is a conjugated AV2. Uh, that have been compared in primate versus AV2 and AV5 for the intrastriatal administration. So the um, remarkable property here is, is from the uh, administrations in the uh, uh, striatum, we have a very nice expression and distribution of, uh, in this case, the GFP from the site administration to the substantia nigra, which is one of the most difficult structure to be targeted using AV. And in comparison to AV2 and AV5, we have improved dramatically 
the uh, volume and, and number of cells uh, overexpressing the GFP and the level of expressions. At the same time, we have improved the biodistributions and the transition efficiency by conjugating AV2. We have not changed the cell specificity. Our conjugated AV2 is primarily targeting and expressing in uh, neurons. We have used the same uh, conjugated vectors, in this case using a therapeutic transgen. It's one of our uh, programs uh, currently in preclinical development for GBA1 Parkinson, using the conjugated AV2 encoding for the GBA1 uh, gene, which is the, the gene encoding for the GKS enzyme. We have been able, from the striatum administration, to achieve a very high level of both protein and GKS expression in the putamen, where the uh, vectors was administrated, but as well in the globus pallidus and substantia nigra, which are here again critical structure to be targeted for Parkinson's disease. Recently, we have explored other route of administration, and specifically the uh, CSF uh, route of administration, which uh, will not require uh, neurosurgery. Here in these studies, this is an NHP study where we have administrated through the, in, uh, the ICM route, which is one of the CSM, uh, CSF route of administration. We have co-administrated a mix of conjugated AV2, conjugated AV9, AV2, and AV9 vectors. And we look at the level of transient expression at the mRNA level of all those vectors, all, again, co-injected together. And, on the left side of this slide, you see the on-target level of expression of the transgene, and the right, the off-target. And you can see that AV2, which is the blue line, is known to be not a good vector for this route of administrations. We confirm it here. But the conjugated version of AV2, so the green, gray, and yellow line, has proven to improve dramatically the level of transduction of AV2. And as a comparator, we have used AV9, which is a red line. And you see that we have made those conjugated AV2 as good as AV9 and sometimes even better in certain structures. At the same time, we improve uh, the transduction of AV2 in these structures. We have not increased the off-target transduction of AV2 as opposed to AV9, which is one of the uh, issues with this uh, serotype where when you inject in ICM, most of the vectors is actually transducing the liver or the DRG, which might be a, a source of, of, of toxicity. So here, the conjugated version of AV2 have a, still a very low level of transductions of DRG and liver. So where are we heading to now? We are developing new ligand technology using, as I mentioned earlier, peptide. And our first uh, uh, ligands we have developed is a TFR binding peptide conjugated ligand. Uh, why TFR? Because it's a well-established uh, uh, structure activity relationship between peptide and the receptors, which is uh, expressed on endothelial cells and has been already uh, used to actually cross the BBB for, or to vehicle a large molecule across the BBB, as well as for, to target the skeletal muscle. So we have been able to design different versions of these ligands by selecting a TFR binding peptide, which is already, or has been already demonstrated to interact with the human TFR and the rodent TFR. And we have been able to conjugate these uh, ligands onto AV2 and AV9, which were the two first serotypes. But you know, as we have demonstrated for other ligands, we can basically conjugate any kind of serotype in AV. So we have already in vitro data demonstrating that we can transduce a cell line expressing TFR receptors with this conjugated uh, AV. We are in the process of, of now doing in vivo studies where we're going to look at the BBB crossing and skeletal muscle transduction, uh, skeletal muscle transduction. So recently, we have uh, worked on expanding our technology to LNPs. The reason why is um, many groups have worked on you know conjugating LNPs for obvious reasons. Uh, the you know LNPs have a restricted. Uh, um, um, tropism to the liver. So the idea was to develop an alternative option to the one existing, which are either 
conjugation of Lipid's prior formulation, and that has a lot of limitation as uh, basically we cannot conjugate um, a large molecule on lipids because it will alter the formulations of uh, LNPs. So the option is to uh, modify the LNPs uh, after uh, formulations, and, and our strategy like for AV was to work on existing or commercially available lipids. So what we are doing is basically really comparable to what we are doing to AVs. We are formulating AV, formulating LNPs with, um, again, existing uh, lipids. Uh, pres uh, so one of those lipids is conjugable with uh, one of four chemistry called the frog chemistry. And we have already uh, successfully conjugated those LNPs with different um, ligands, including uh, uh, our carbohydrate red based ligands and peptide-based ligands. The, the competition is mostly using um, a different approach with the ma malamide chemistry, which has a lot of limitation and also not very stable chemistry for covalent binding, because what we do on LNPs uh, as well as on AVs is a covalent binding of the ligands. So we are currently testing those new conjugated um, LNPs. We have seen that we have a good stability. Uh, in vivo study will be uh, uh, performed early next year. So talking about our pipelines, we have a pipelines using conjugated AV uh, for targeting neurodegenerative disorders with uh, two um, mechanisms of action. One, GB1 Parkinson, already mentioned that program. The second one is using TFEB, which is a, a master regulator of the autophagy pathway. Uh, the uh, TFEB program are currently in preclinical proof of concept study uh, in animal, where we are uh, uh, targeting different diseases, including Parkinson, MSA, and other neurodegenerative disorders. Uh, for GBA1, uh, we have uh, already generated proof of concept on the GBA1 deficient mice model, where we have. Uh, recapitulate and restore the GKS functions on a dose-dependent manner. Um, we are uh, now running a second studies, which will deliver soon on another GBA1 loss of function model. We have, and I show you the data already, um, demonstrated the biodistribution of this uh, uh, product in NHP with achieving um, the uh, minimum level of GKS expressions required for uh, treating patients with GB1 Parkinson. And we think that we'll be able to, with this product, to address this population with a dose which will be below 10 to the 12 total VG, which is basically 100 times lower than uh, the competitions in clinic currently. We got positive outcome with uh, EMEA and uh, FDA uh, from pre pre and meeting, where we have discussed the, uh, uh, of course, the uh, CMC uh, uh, preclinical uh, evidence plan as well as clinical uh, study design. What is important is with this program, we have demonstrated that the conjugation technology we have been able to translate that at uh, at the GMP-like uh, conditions. Uh, where we um, have been able to conjugate uh, a 24-liter uh, uh, volume of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, AV uh, batch with that technology. So for uh, the GBA1, the next step are a, a pilot NHP study where we are evaluating another route of administration, so uh, uh, ICM versus intrastriatal. GLP-TOC study, we are ready to start early 24, and we are looking to uh, actually file an IND for this program in 2025. This is our team. Um, uh, so we are very fortunate to have a very talented group of people around uh, in, in Cove uh, with a long experience in gene therapy and ATMP. We have recently hired Lolita Petit. She was previously leading the preclinical gene therapy effort at GNG based here on the West Coast, and she uh, relocated in France, and we are very pleased to have her on board. This is our investors and board of directors. We have a very talented uh, independent executive directors, starting with uh, Claudia, which is here in the room, uh, which was previously with Astelas. Olivier Danos is the CSO of Regenix Bio. Fred Chero, 
uh, was a CEO of uh, Logic Bio, is, is now SVP at Alexion for uh, genetic medicine. So we are based in France, our headquarters is in Paris, um, our R&D labs are in Paris. We have a process development capability as well in Lyon, uh, in the second city in France. And this is it. Thank you for your attention.